Okay, so I was able to track down a manual on eBay. As you can see, it's in pretty rough shape, but everything is still there. 70 bucks for this stupid thing. But when they're that rare and you can't find them online, that's kind of what you have to do. So this is where the hydraulic fluid goes in. And I was checking the dipstick and it had plenty before I started, but I knew that as the system filled up that it could get lower. And uh, let me see if I can get in here a little bit better and show you. This is the, this is like a, the filter housing. So there's a diagram of it right here. Basically, this is your tank. Okay, now the hydraulic fluid is pulled from the tank right here. You see to the hydraulic system. And then everything is dumped back into the filter assembly. On the next page is what it looks like. Okay, so everything goes back through the filter assembly. The issue that I was having, once I lifted uh, any amount of weight on it, it would start to drift. It would drift back down and it wouldn't stay locked. And so I thought that it was either going to be in the valve body in here. Uh, I thought maybe it had like a leaking O-ring uh, or it was just low on fluid. So what happened was I, I, I checked the fluid while it was running and it kept getting lower and lower. And then I've turned it off as you can hear. If you see as I open this up, I don't know if it's still going to be doing it there. See how it's releasing all the hydraulic fluid? Which means this system right here is currently under pressure. So there's something wrong with the filter where it's not allowing the fluid to dump back in. So it's pressurizing this side of the system and you're running low on fluid on the other side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it apart, clean out the filter, and fill it up with new hydraulic fluid. And we'll go from there. All right, so I'm going to degrease this and pressure wash it before. That way there's less piles of old caked on dirty, nasty grease that falls into that filter while I try to clean it out. So, see how it goes. So I took the uh, cap off of the hydraulic fluid filler, and that is definitely not what it's supposed to look like. It looks like a milkshake colored. So usually this is when water mixes with the fluid, but it can also be caused from air getting in. It could just be frothy, so it might settle down. The only water that's in the whole system is in the is a radiator fluid obviously the coolant and it's it's full and it's bright green so it's not uh, it's not coolant getting in the system so my guess right now is it's probably cavitation because it's building up pressure on the backside and it's not able to get the the fluid back into the tank you can see the pressure washer did a pretty good job of cleaning up the area around it and that's gonna be critical when we pull this out because we don't want to get any contaminants in there because obviously this is our filter so as soon as this level drops, I'll pull this tank off, and then we'll see what the filter's like. Uh, we'll drain all the fluid, and we'll get it filled up with new fluid and test it out. So I took a sample of our mocha-colored hydraulic oil, and we'll let it sit for a little bit, and we'll see if it separates. All right, I just got back from O'Reilly. I got 10 gallons of uh, 10 weight hydraulic oil, which is what the manual called for. Uh, had to go to Napa as well. Luckily, there was a part number, 1168, that was on the old filter, and it sure looks like the right one. So I'm gonna throw it together. Should have it running pretty soon.
This is the bottom of the filter, and this is kind of a cool little piece. This piece here is attached to a spring on the other side, and it's a bypass valve. So if the pressure inside gets too great, and the filter can't push the fluid out, it'll bypass the filter and get dumped out of here. So I checked the tension on it. That looks good. Uh, everything else looks okay. One thing that's kind of interesting, the oil, I, it hasn't ran in, in over a day, and it looks about the same as it did before. It's still that kind of mocha color. I'm going to let it sit for a couple of days and see if anything separates, if I can get any water floating to the top. Usually the water flows to the bottom of oil, and it does it in a matter of an hour or so. So, you know, hour or two after you turn it off, you pull the drain plug, and it comes out water first and then oil, and then you know you've got water in it. And that doesn't seem like that's the case here. It also doesn't seem like it's frothing up from air, but kind of hard to tell. So I'm going to install this. It's a reverse of the same way that it came out. Um, I'm replacing the cork gaskets with RTV. Uh, in this case, this is just what I'm using, the just the regular Permatex Ultra Black. It's good stuff. I usually use the gray, the one that's used for dirt bikes. That one's my favorite. But in this case, I'm just going to use the black one here. So I don't like the cork gaskets. They swell up over time and they give all kinds of problems. So I'm not going to use that. I'm just going to use the RTV and it'll be just a reverse of how we took it apart. All right, so I'm getting ready to place an order for some parts for the uh, forklift here. I'm going with the Bosch uh, triple gauges, black inch and a half. They're $38. The Spectra Performance uh, six foot choke cable. I went with this one because it's all metal and uh, this thing's gonna be out in the sun a lot and I cannot stand it when the, uh, the handle breaks off those plastic ones. This is 879, a Hobbs meter, hour meter. The one on there is just all seized up and then uh, the Bosch copper tubing. Uh, this replaces the nylon tubing that it comes with on the mechanical oil pressure gauge and I'll show you why that's so important as soon as the parts come in. So it looks like everything's primed so I'll have them in a couple days. Alright I'm working on getting these gauges going so I marked out where the new ones are going to be. This is all the junk I took out from underneath it. Uh, oil pressure warning light, not sure what the other one was. Uh, the old Hobbs meter, it's not working. The horn, I'm not sure what this is, what I was hooked up for. So it looks like a voltage regulator, I'm not really sure, but it wasn't hooked up. So in the process of removing all that, and then we're going to get these new gauges in, and I'll show you how I get them all hooked up. All right, we got the new Hobbs meter, uh, fuel gauge, and then I added the volts, water temperature, and oil pressure. I probably should have gone with electrical senders because as you can see, I did not have a ton of distance to get it hooked up with either the uh, oil pressure or the water temperature, but it'll be okay and I can always change it later. So I've got myself a bit of a mess over here with everything, so I'll get this all cleaned up and then I'll fire it up and we'll see what the readings are. All right, the choke wasn't quite long enough uh, to go on the dash, so I've got it right here. And then uh, all my gauges, and she's quite cold right now, so let's see how it fires up. Oh man, there it goes. Let's see. There's a sweet spot, a little warm up that's about halfway down. And look at that oil pressure. Beautiful. Voltage is working. 